Hello everyone, haven't seen you guys in such a long time. i um, been having some technical difficulties, computer went down, computer went to the store, computer came back now, so we're all good to go and hopefully things will be back on track to the way um, I had planned things to go. If you are ever looking for something to fill your day in between my videos or if something happens, such as, you know, my camcorder breaks down, God forbid, um, you guys can always go on over to my blog www.pbunnyp.com and there's always some kind of beauty post, DIY or just shenanigans of some kind going on over on my blog. So that's lots of fun. I hope more of you guys will come and join me because I love hearing from you guys. I know a couple of you do consistently read my blog and um, you guys leave comments and I always love those. So that's a heads up and number two four too is that the background has changed because if you live on the west coast or if you've been to the west coast california excluded you'll know that during the fall and winter time all you get is rain it's rain and rain and rain and rain boots and umbrellas and scarves and more rain and rain boots and coffee so if you um or trying to film during the day, what often happens is that you get no natural sunlight. This is probably the first sliver of sunlight we've had over here in the past three to four days. It's ridiculous. So what I want to do is be in a space where I can film during the day, um, but also with the option of filming during the night if I turn on the lighting in my room. So hopefully this will work out a lot better and this will be the permanent setup for the fall winter time um, because I'm just not going to get a good um, lighting situation probably anywhere else in my room unfortunately what you're seeing today is all natural lighting please leave me a comment and let me know how it's working out for you on your side um, when you're watching the video if everything looks clear if um, there's any improvements i can make and if you have any suggestions for what to do about this background which is currently the doors of my closet so business of the day beauty product empties video. This is my very first one. I hope to do many more. I think this is super fun. And what I'm going to do is actually combine um, products I've used up also with products that I hate so much that I can't use up that I just want it to go away. So you get a little bit of both today. Let's start off with um, one of the other kind. This is the Sally Hirschberger Wreck and Roll Texturizing Gel, which is a good product on its own, except I don't know who had the idea to formulate this with such a heavy, intense, musky fragrance. This scent just does not go away. It stays in your hair all day, it stays in your hair all night, it stays in your hair sometimes even after you try to wash it out. It's just not a pleasant scent in my opinion. It's really intense. It's more suited for a men's hairstyling product, I feel, rather than a woman's hairstyling line. And um, I do like Sally Hershberger, which is why I went out and got this product in the first place. I think she does fabulous hair. And she always does hair that's really effortless with a lot of texture. That's just really fun and easy to wear. So I'm not sure what went wrong during the production process and who thought it would be nice to have this scent but I can't stand it and that's the only reason I'm getting rid of this product and not to mention no one else around me can stand this scent either. I don't know but not a good product for me. But this one is actually quite decent. This is the Organics Renewing Moroccan Argan Oil which looks like this. Um, I have done a full review on this product. If you want all the finer details, please click the link to this corresponding blog post for this video. And um, I'll have a list of all the products I talk about, including um, links to any reviews I've done or links to where you can buy them if it's a hard to find product. I do this because I don't like clogging up the entire info bar section with too many links. I just want to keep it simple. So for all the videos that you're seeing, um, there will be a link to each corresponding blog post for the video that you're watching. But back to this, I do like this product a lot. I use it mostly as a styling treatment, more as a treatment hair essence type of product. Um, this is very similar in my opinion to the Biosilk 
hairstyling product. If you like that, you'll probably like this as well. This is a lighter consistency, but it gives me very similar results when I put it into my hair. It just smooths my hair a little bit. It doesn't kill any natural texture I have in my hair, which I like, and um, keeps things looking easy but natural. The effects of the treatment aspect is not very strong. It's not something I would use exclusively for the treatment purpose, but I do like it as a styling product with a kick of argan in here. This is a silicone product, so if you are looking for non-silicone, move on. But if you do like the silicone feel to your hair care or hair styling product, this is a good one to go for. Next up, moving along, is from Pantene. This has been in my shower for such a long time. It's unbelievable. Um, I've just been trying to use this one up, but I keep getting distracted because there are so many other great products out there, and this one just wasn't doing it for me. This is the Pantene Hair Solutions Intensive Restoration Treatment. Um, comes in a 302 milliliter tub. This is huge and probably one of the reasons why it took me so long to finish using it. It's not a bad product, but for me, I feel like it's more of a daily conditioner and has the consistency of conditioner rather than intensive treatment or mask like it promotes itself to be. Now this is meant for medium to thick hair, but I feel like if you do have medium to thick hair, this is probably not rich or potent enough to calm and smooth and treat your hair. This feels very light. Great for um, fine hair, great if you have oily hair, just don't put it up in your roots, but definitely not an intensive treatment like I thought it would be. Um, just not my type of thing and not what I was looking for and um, much better products out there in my opinion. But at $3.99, if you do have normal hair and you don't have you know hair that's really fussy, this will make a good just daily conditioning product. Next up is um, this little thing which is, an, which is a deluxe sample sized hand cream I received in one of my beauty boxes way back in the day. This is from Ahava and it is the Dead, Dead Sea Water Mineral Hand Cream. Right here is 20 milliliters as a sample size, but it took me such a long time to finish using it because you don't need a lot in order um, to spread it over your hands. I, I'm not crazy about this because it does kind of leave a film on my skin and takes a long time for it to sink in. It does make her hands feel super silky and super soft, but um, it's not as good as my Crabtree and Evelyn, you guys. I still love that thing the best. So I know a couple of people have repurchased this and um, do rave and talk about it, but not quite my thing. It's okay, um, but not something I would repurchase personally. Next up, following on with the nail stuff, this is the Quote by Orly Polish Keeper. You may have seen it last year when I first purchased it. I was looking for something to replace my Cetrafeet fast drying top coat because apparently in the tiny fine print on the bottle, it says this product has been known to cause birth defects in the state of California. Why just the state of California? I have no idea. What birth defects? I have no idea either. Um, but I would feel comfortable not using something that has to say that on the bottle. So I went in search of another fast drying top coat and came upon this one, which is um, made by Orly, but for the Quill brand. And the Quill brand is exclusive to Shoppers Drug Mart over here in Canada. Their nail polish is amazing, by the way. And this little guy is not bad as well. However, it still does get goopy and just thick after a couple of months or so. Now, this does last a bit longer than the Cetrafeet before it starts getting gunky and drying out. But at this point, with about, oh... I don't know, one third left in the bottle, I can't use this anymore. There's no way I can spread this out evenly. It won't go on smoothly. It's really hard to work with. So it just has to go. I mean, it's a good product. I just wish they wouldn't dry out so fast. Um, What else do I have in here? Oh, three makeup items. Let's talk about mascara first. Um, the first one here is the L'Oreal Paris Double Extend Mascara. Looks like so has two sides, um, serum plus base, 
and this is the mascara itself. Now, the reason I don't like this could be because, for one, that I did not get the waterproof version. However, even as this, I find that this mascara really just doesn't wear well on the lashes. It gets flaky. Um, it drops little flaky bits underneath the eyes. I have to keep wiping them away. It does lengthen my lashes a good bit. I do use the L'Oreal Lash Serum and I love it, which is why I went and tested this one out. But it is in no way on the same standard, I feel, as the Lash Serum. So um, not something I recommend. It doesn't just do much at all and it keeps flaking off and I'm not happy with that one at all. So the lower L double extend is not on my to buy list again. And another mascara that I was hoping to like again but I don't and that's kind of weird and it's from Maybelline. This is the Maybelline Falsies Volume Express Waterproof Mascara. Backstory of a Maybelline girl at heart, I love, adore Maybelline mascaras. The Volume Express line from Maybelline has been my holy grail for years. Possibly almost a decade, I don't know. But ever since I started wearing makeup, I just love the Volume Express. And I've used it on and off for many, many years. When they came out with the falsies, I was very intrigued and I was very excited to give it a go. It has this curved brush wand which I have nothing against the wand. The wand is fine, but I find the formula not to be so great. Um, it's quite clumpy on my lashes and it just doesn't smooth out properly. And I still feel like it does not give me as much volume as the Colossal Volume Express in the yellow tube. So I prefer that one. This is not something for me and um, just doesn't flow my boat. Last product, let's end on a good note, is this one from Canmake. I've used this so much that you can no longer see the description, but it is Canmake and it is there. Um, oh gosh. Canmake Cover and Stretch Concealer UV, and this is a waterproof concealer. I have this in shade number one. I've also reviewed this product as well. What I love about this is how well it covers. If I can get a little smidgen out of here, I'll show you the shade. It's a very yellow toned concealer, which is what I like actually, because it blends out more naturally into my skin. I like the fact that this is quite thick, it covers well, I can use it for underneath the eyes, or I can use it on spots and blemishes. Plus, it stays on the whole day, it's waterproof, it's hard working, and comparatively, it's not that expensive. You do have to buy this online if you live overseas, but even with that, this is probably one of the best concealers I've used, and certainly one that I would repurchase and be happy to repurchase over and over again. So, can make, I love you, you do great products. So I think this wraps up the video. If you guys have recommendations for products you're loving, products that you just used up, or just things that you hate right now and you want me to know, stay away from that product, leave me a comment down below and talk to me. Um, I hope that you guys are doing wonderful and I'll see you again very soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.